Hello, Year 9. So we're going to do two lessons um, this week on the themes in an Inspectacles before we then move on to looking at some of the poetry that you'll be studying for your GCSE. So the words that we're going to retrieve today is patriarchal. Now remember, patriarchal society is a society that is dominated and led by men. And you will find that all of the literature texts we're going to study for your GCSE are all, unfortunately, from a patriarchal society as they are classic works of literature. And we know that it wasn't until we get on into the 20th century and in the 21st century that we are no longer in a patriarchal society, although there are some that would possibly argue that we are still in a patriarchal society. So you'll have to make that decision for yourselves. But thinking about an Inspector Clause, what evidence do we have from throughout the play that it is set in a patriarchal society? So you can pause the video and answer that question. So morality is our new word today, and we'll go through the definition um, in a little bit more detail in a minute about morality. But if you have um, morality, then you are essentially, it's your set of morals um, that you live by. So a sense of common decency. So which character at the start of the play is presented as having the most morality? And then finally, think about the moral messages of an inspector calls. Think about the lessons Priestley is trying to teach us. Then think all the way back to term one of um, this year when we look, spent the term looking at extracts from Charles Dickens. So try and see if you can remember um, some of the things uh, Charles Dickens believed in and some of those extracts. What other moral messages was Charles Dickens trying to make us think about as readers and how could we link that to an inspectacles? So you can pause the video and answer the questions. So the evidence we have that it is set in a patriarchal society is the fact that Mr. Burling, the prosperous manufacturer, is the head of the company um, and head of the family, and he is in fact male. We know that Eric, his male child, is his heir. He'll inherit the business. And we know that Sheila's only real purpose is to get married to someone rich. So there's our evidence of patriarchy as well as the treatment of Eva Smith. Eric is the character shown as having the most morality at the start of the play when he he increasingly disagrees with what Mr. Burling is saying, whereas Gerald agrees. So Eric is presented as having the most morality. We know that him and Sheila are the two characters who are shown by the end of the play to really be converted to the moral messages that the, that the inspector is trying to give them, unlike their parents. So. Charles Dickens, if you can remember right back, felt very passionately about the treatment of the poor and all of his novels deal with presentations of poverty and people in poverty. And he really wanted to make the you know, public realise that just because you were poor didn't mean that it was your fault or that you were a bad person, which really challenged the typical views at the time. So Priestley and Dickens have that in common. Both in Inspectacles and Charles Dickens are, are, you know, focus on characters who have been mistreated because of their poverty. So you'll see in September when we look at A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, I know we looked at an extract of the Cratchits earlier on in the year. When we come to read that, you'll see quite a lot of similarities between Priestley and um, Dickens. So today we're going to focus on the different story types or types of stories Priestley uses um, in an Inspectacles. Sorry, there should be in in that knowledge goal. So we're going to look at the different types of stories, the decisions Priestley's made in the way that he is telling the story of an Inspectacles. So by the end of the lesson, you'll know the four different types of stories Priestley chooses to use to tell the story of the play examples of these four types of stories throughout the play and how these different types of stories link to Priestley's intentions. So to start off with, 
now you've read the whole of the play, I want you to think about the themes. Now, the themes are the sort of big ideas that Priestley wants us to think about. So think back to the action of the play. What themes did you notice? And we've spoken about some of them um, throughout the lesson. If you were asked to write about the main ideas of the play, what would you say? So just pause the video a minute and write down any themes or big ideas you think Priestley wants us to think about. OK. So what's he getting us to think about? Well, he's getting us to think about social class. He's getting us to think about responsibility. He's getting us to think about um, the treatment of the poor and inequality. He's getting us to think about the younger versus the older generation. He's getting us to think about gender issues, about, you know, um, the differences in the treatment of men and women. Um, you know, he's getting us to think essentially about morality. You know, the, the, these sort of Christian concepts of right and wrong. And essentially what we have here is the Burning family trying to learn the errors of their ways, much like in A Christmas Carol when Scrooge is learning um, that if he doesn't change his behaviour, then he's going to be damned, he's going to be in purgatory. We Priestley wants the Burling family to learn that if they don't change their ways, then, you know, society, mankind is doomed. So before we look at the specific themes in more detail, which we're going to do next lesson, it's useful to discuss the different story types that are brought together in the play. So, you know, this is a very densely packed Play and Priestley has chosen to use four different types of stories. So firstly, an inspector calls is a murder mystery. Essentially, a girl has died. A policeman is here to ask questions to find out who is ultimately responsible. It is also a family drama, much like a soap opera. It's also a coming of age story, focuses on the development of Eric and Sheila and then maturing and coming into becoming responsible adults. And it's equally an old fashioned morality play. So we're going to look at each of these um, different types of stories at a time and think about how they are presented in the play. So attached to this email is a document. You can either print it out or if you've got a printer at home or you can just divide your own uh, sheet of paper into four. OK, and label each of your four squares with the different story types. What we're going to do is each slide is going to talk through the different story types and you are going to be making notes in those boxes. So the murder mystery then. The first type of story that the audience notices is the murder mystery. Think back to your reading and answer these questions. So who or what is murdered? Who is the detective in the story? Who is the murderer and why did the murder take place? Now, obviously, this isn't a very conventional murder mystery because essentially no one of the characters is purely responsible. It is essentially a chain of events that they all contributed in. What's also interesting is that the inspector, who we know symbolises J.B. Priestley's views, they don't tell him anything he doesn't already know. So whilst it is a murder mystery, Priestley is subverting or changing the genre slightly. So the story begins with the entrance of an inspector early in Act One. It may appear to be a standard investigation into a crime, a type of Poirot, I can never say Poirot, or Miss Marple, um, those type, if you've ever heard of those quite famous um, sort of drawing room mysteries. But the story later develops into a mu into much more than a simple <coughs> mystery. So think about how Priestley uses the, the mystery theme here to explore much greater issues. So think about how this is a murder mystery mystery play. Look at those bullet points and use those to help you make some notes in that um, section of your piece of paper. OK, so how is an inspector calls presented as a murder mystery? But equally, how does it differ from your typical or traditional murder mystery? 
So you can pause the video now and then make those notes. So a family drama. So soap operas are very popular. EastEnders, Coronation Street, Hollyoaks, etc. These are family dramas, essentially. So think about what usually happens in a soap opera then. Well, we have um, arguments, we have disagreements, we have um, couples, romance, then issues with the romance. You know, we have feuds and arguments between different families. Can you think of any similar events to an inspector cause that are very similar to, to a traditional soap opera? Think particularly about the issues with Sheila and Gerald. Think about um, Eric and Eva Smith. And think equally about the drama between Eric and Sheila and their parents as well. So from the very first scenes of an inspector cause, we see a family drama beginning to evolve. And remember, right at the start of the play, we see that there are issues between um, the different family members. We are watching the way that the members of a family respond to one another. The opening scene is one of celebration within the family. And who is celebrating? What are they celebrating? Well, we know that they're celebrating this engagement, which is going to improve the social status of the family. So as you make notes for how an inspector course is presented as a family drama, Think carefully about, um, you know, the way the Burling family are at the centre of the drama. Who are the main players in the drama? What relationships between the family make them dramatic? And what has happened essentially to the family by the end of the play? You know, think about their whole dialogue after the inspector leaves. How has this family changed from the very opening of the play? So when you're making notes, think about Gerald and Sheila's relationship. Think about what Eric and Gerald both did to Eva Smith. Think about the divide between the parents and the children as well. And how does Priestley present this as a family drama type of story? So pause the video and then make those notes. So what we also have here is a coming of age story. J.B. Priestley shows us the young characters, Eric and Sheila, as they change throughout the story. These characters undergo huge emotional and psychological changes throughout the play. This makes the story a Buildings Roman or coming of age story. Think about the different types, sorry, think about the different things Eric and Sheila must confront in the story. So what have both of them really got to overcome? And again, it's not just what they've got to overcome in terms of their parents. It's what do they have to overcome regarding their past actions and their past beliefs? In what ways have they grown and changed by the time the story ends? How have the older characters reacted to what has happened? So think about answering some of those questions as you make your notes. And then finally, consider the following speech made by Eric at the end of the play. How have the events of the evening truly changed both him and Sheila? So Eric says, what's the use of talking about behaving sensibly? You're beginning to pretend now that nothing's really happened at all. And I can't see it like that. The girl's still dead, isn't she? Nobody's brought her back to life, have they? So think about Sheila and Eric very much playing the role of the inspector. Um, towards their parents after he has left the stage. So how is this a coming of age story? How do we see the way the, the growth and the change in both Sheila and Eric's characters? And again, why has Priestley done this? Think about how Sheila and Eric are models for the audience sitting and watching this play. If Eric and Sheila can change their mind and overcome their, you know, snobberish, snobby upbringing, then the audience can change as well. So pause the video and make those notes. And then finally, this is a morality play. So a morality play is a very traditional type of story. Many of the oldest forms of drama in Western Europe are morality plays from the medieval period. So morality plays were religious plays that sought to show people the error of their ways. They try to show characters confessing and repenting of their sins. 
Now remember, repent, we talked about this as part of our key vocabulary in an earlier lesson. Repent is where you um, feel guilt for what you've done and want to change, want to make up for what you've done. So in these types of plays, they are warned about against the temptation of the seven deadly sins. So pride, covetousness, lust, envy, gluttony, anger and sloth. Um, so covetousness is jealousy, really. Gluttony is greed and sloth is laziness. So if a morality play is a, a religious, essentially a Christian type of play that teaches its audience the dangers of sinning, essentially, how could an inspector cause be considered a morality play? Think about the different sins that the Burling family committed? What was the consequence of those sins? Think about what they did to Eve Smith. Think about then how an inspector cause could be considered a morality play. And we're going to do a lesson um, next week where we'll look at this concept of the seven deadly sins and how they link to the characters in a little bit more detail. Just pause the video and then make those notes. Finally then, so you should now have a nice page of notes based on those different slides. Why do you think Priestley chose to write a morality play? So how does the fact that Priestley chose to write a morality play link to his intentions and link to what he is trying to do in an inspector course? Okay, so that is the end of today's lesson and I will see you tomorrow.